Introducing CKAN. That's C-K-A-N. A, a one-stop mod manager that will make it super fast and simple. Well, the first thing we are going to do is go to github.com, KSP CCAN, CCAN releases, link in the description. And we're going to want to grab the CCAN EXE. Click on that so that it downloads into your downloads folder. Once you have it downloaded, just move it from your downloads folder into its permanent home. Doesn't matter anywhere. I, for some odd reason, I store it in my videos folder along with my video captures. Wait. Before you go any further, take a moment and like, share, and subscribe, and help out a growing channel. Every sub counts. Back to your CCAN demo. When it launches, you're going to be presented with a permissions window. Me personally, I just hit yes on this just to make it all easier. I haven't gone through the no step yet. Clicking OK on that is going to prompt Windows to double check with you that it is OK. After that's complete, you should see a list of all of your mods for KSP2. And if you're lucky like me, it'll already have found your install path for your Steam, so it knows where KSP2 is. If you want to verify that it is found the install path properly, just go to File and Manage Instances, and it'll show you the path right there. If you hit No for the permissions, or if it didn't find your KSP install path automatically, you may have to tinker with some stuff in the CCAN settings or in the game instance path. And hopefully one of those will get you up and going. With any of the mods selected in the right hand side of your screen, you will have four tabs, metadata, relationship, contents, and versions. Most important one being relationships. This is going to show you which dependencies this mod needs. So any mod that is listed here is going to be automatically installed if you install orbital survey in this case so for example with this mod it needs patch manager and patch manager is going to install space warp space warp requires beepin x uitk and uitk also requires beepin x under the context tab you're going to be able to see all of the different packages that are coming along with this so it'll give you a sense as to what files and things, icons, readme files. And the versions tab will obviously show you versions. And then there is the main metadata page, and this is where you can get to the home page, space doc repository, bug tracking, any of the extra web pages that the developer is using. So if we just take a little peek around, we can see there is a till dusk mod. And it also gives us the author, the version number, how large the file size is when it was released. And then up in the right hand side, you'll just get a simple little brief description like a mod that has the ability to warp to sunrise for easy launches. And again, the relationships as to which modules that it's going to bring in as dependencies. And where is custom flags here? Oh, there it is. I've installed custom flags manually because at the moment it is not supported by CCAN, but it's showing up and I believe that's what the AD is standing for because it used to just be a dash until I manually installed it. And we will cover that process at the end of the video. And there can be a lot of mods. Some of them won't necessarily be compatible. Some of them might not necessarily be usable as much anymore. Some of these were also created to fill gaps from the initial release, which have been patched. And some of these mods might not technically be worth installing, but we're going to be checking them out over time. And one thing to keep in mind is not necessarily all of these mods are mods that we will use. Some of these mods may just be giving some functionality that we don't see directly, but we use through other mods. And some of them might just be a personal preference in a sense of like mouse flyover. What is this? A customizable mod that lets you fly using mouse controls instead of WASD keys. When I get a little adventurous, there is a Kerbal or Control System 2 and KRPC2. Uh, these ones might be a little bit interesting being that they are Python scriptable languages that I can automate some things with. So maybe I might play around with those later on one day when I get, again, adventurous. And here's a good example, less wobble. 
devs fix that with some of the latest updates, so I don't really think the less wobble is something that's worth installing. Yet, that is just my personal opinion. Up at the top, there is a filter button, which the display didn't record for me, but it basically just allows you to select between everything or compatible. I tend to just leave them all on. Along with that, up at the top, we also have an apply button. So if we go into the apply, this is all the different jobs that we've stacked up. So at the moment, I have updates that are pending that I have not done yet. If we click apply, it's going to start downloading each of those modules and doing the updates to them. So we don't have to do anything for this. We just sit back and let it do its downloads and figure its things out. And we've got a little manual refresh just to make sure that you're all up to date. There are three main checkboxes that you interface with to install and do different things with CCAN. For me, I usually only use the two. I do not use the middle auto install. I found any time that I used it, it just caused me problems, so I just stopped using it. Once you've hit the checkbox for installed, the it'll be added into your list of jobs, which you do through apply. Same thing with updates. You can click the updates to update your different mods. There is a update all button just up at the top and that will actually just turn on all the updates. Really, really great if you got a bunch of different mods installed. Now in terms of the auto installed that I said that I do not use, it's a little bit mislabeled because when you do hover it over it, it comes up saying it's not auto installing, it's actually auto uninstalling a mod in certain cases. Otherwise I was having cases where I would update one or two mods and all my other mods would get removed or the mod that I just updated got installed and then removed. So in terms of like orbital survey, I was um, basically erasing my progression through surveying different planets every time I did that and I would lose stuff. So I just stopped using the auto installs and anytime I do anything, I make sure all my auto installs are unchecked. Only the ones I want installed are checked and then the ones that I want to update are checked and then hit apply. And within our Steam folder, you can see that it gives us a folder for CCAN. We also have our beep in X. This seems to be where all the mods are actually handled in. Perfect example of one of those mods that we as the players don't interface with, but the mod writers and developers of those mods do interface with. Inside the beep in X folder is where you will see a folder called plugins. And this is where our mods actually get installed. So in the case of probably not all of them, but in my case for the custom flags, this is where I had to install that mod manually. And inside the mod, you or inside the plugin folder, sorry, not the mods, inside the plugins, you can see all the different mods that have actually been moved in and installed. So I have my orbital survey, my flight planner, alarm clock, all the different ones that I actually use, and then all of their dependencies that are required to make them work. And I don't have to worry about them. CCAN just does them for me. Now, in the case of the custom flags, this is where I had to put the custom flags folder. And then inside my root folder, I had to add that little flags folder. And then my custom flags mod just started working. Once you have some mods installed, your boot up will be a little bit different. Firstly, you will have these patches that will get installed depending on how many you've installed. In my experience, if I'm going to run into a problem, I'm going to run into a problem here and it's just going to freeze and lock at some point and never actually load. But once it has loaded, you will find you now have this mods menu. Inside there, some you might see is yellow or this caution flag and that is meaning that it is out of date. Just meaning that we need to do another pass through with CCAN and re-update our mods. You can turn them off. This does require you to reboot your game, but it does give you the ability to just uninstall a mod without removing it from your system entirely. Now, this is kind of a little bit off the rails, but this is just a little bit of a talk for us, for mod developers, for the KSP devs themselves. The one thing that always kind of really annoyed me with mods is they're all or nothing. I have to... Any games that I'm playing all have those mods or none of them have those mods. 
I would really love it in the sense if mods became game file dependent. So I could have two different game files that I'm playing. One of them uses uh, maybe the life support module to make it a little bit more complicated for you. But yet then you have another game file that you're playing in and that one doesn't use that mod. So instead of having the mods be on and off for the game as a whole, I would actually really like them to be on and off per game file. So taking this whole little mods window and then moving it into this area so that it is set and linked to the actual game file itself, not a system-wide function. With a little tweak like that, I think the mods could be like super cool to use for KSP2.